Hello, I'm Amara Jones, host of a series of talks um, here at the People Summit on behalf of Free Speech Television, where we're taking advantage of the incredible collection of thought leaders, activists, and I guess in this case, future governors um, to talk about a series of critical issues at this pivotal moment in history. So today I'm thrilled to welcome Ben Jealous, who um, is also my fellow classmate from uh, Columbia. Um, Ben has threatened to host a roast for me one day, so <laughs> I'll have to... Uh, I got all the stories, all of them. <laughs> both ways. Um, but as you were Mutually saying... assured destruction. It, mad. <laughs> but you, you reminded me, and I totally forgotten that it was you, me, Eric Garcetti, uh, there was Ben Losky who works for... Uh, Cuomo. Eric Cuomo. Yep. Um, yeah, it was a long time ago. But one of the things that, go ahead. No, and we all ran for student council. That's right, like and we were all on student council together. It's like political preschool. And Ben was the community affairs officer on community on student council. Uh, and so you can tell that although things change with time, that hasn't changed with Ben. <laughs> it's been remarkably consistent his entire life. And of course, you recently announced um, that you're running for governor of Maryland. Yep. Yes. You're running um, explicitly as a progressive. Yep. Uh, you are a, a famous, um, I would imagine, in certain parts of the Democratic Party, infamous yeah. surrogate for, um, for Bernie Sanders. Yeah. So um, I'm wondering if you can talk a little bit about why, first let's start off, why are you running for governor? And then I want to talk um, about your history as an activist and how it led you into where you are, because this is an activist conference and your journey may be one that a lot of people here follow at some point. So Look, why are you running for governor? Absolutely. No, and the strangest thing for me being at an activist conference is that I'm in a suit. <laughs> I feel like I should have a backpack on because that's how I usually come. Right. Um, right now in our country, extreme right-wing conservatives run every branch of our federal government. And while we as progressives have for half a century mourned the transfer of power, we call it the devolution, federal power to the states. Right now we have to engage in a bit of judo and just say, hey, you got the federal government, well, we'll take the states. And all the power that's there, we'll use it to move our families forward, no matter what you do in Washington, to enforce non-discrimination, no matter what you do in Washington, to get back to building things again, quite frankly, in our states, no matter what you do in Washington, to make sure that every person in our state has health care, no matter what you do in Washington. And that's why I'm running, because I see a real opportunity for us in Maryland to move our families forward in a way that my children need the grown-ups to, and every child in our state, frankly, needs us to be the grown-ups right now. And if Washington is creating problems, well, we, well, we have to solve them. So what um, has been the reaction to your announcement? Um, you're running against a field, I believe it's three or four other Democrats. Could be eight. Could be as many as eight <laughs> other Democrats. Bring them all. Uh, yeah, uh, eight <laughs> is enough. Um, so there'll be nine of you. Yeah. So what's been the reaction to your announcement? Because if memory serves so far, you're the only non-politician. Is that correct? The, yeah, no, there's, there's one other guy in there who's in, yeah, there's actually two others. There's, okay. There's one who's been a, a, a corporate lawyer throughout his career. There's one who's... Uh, worked for the State Department, kind of worked in tech throughout his career. Yeah. I'm the only movement guy in this race. I've been, uh, as you know, a civil rights leader, a community organizer. And coming out of the civil rights movement, coming out of the progressive movement, got a really good reception amongst activists who work, amongst working families who want to see us get back to solving real problems again. Folks are hungry uh, for us to actually make the economic ladder in our state work again. You know, my mom started off life in the McCullough Homes Housing Projects in West Baltimore. And a generation later, her son's going off to Oxford as a Rhodes Scholar. And in between, you know, her parents had gone back to grad school. You know, mm -hmm. These folks had graduated from an HBCU during the Great Depression. You know, granddad got a job as a fourth cook on the as a dishwasher on the B&O Railroad. Grandma went to work for Planned Parenthood. But as she was, um, as my mom was coming up, each of them went back to grad school, got better jobs, uh, frankly jobs that had union rep representation, moved out of the housing projects, into the tenements, out of the tenements, all the way into Ashburton. It's kind of like the Jefferson's route in Baltimore. And um, 
And back then, either the schools worked or we got together as activists and made them work. My mom sued the local high school when she was 12, so she could desegregate it when she was 15. And the economy worked that if you, if you put in hard work and you bettered yourself, there were better opportunities for you. Uh -huh. Well, today, a lot of that's broken. Uh, our schools in Maryland, we do a good job of re recruiting the best trained from other states to come to Maryland and uh, mask the fact that we don't do the best job of training our own. Um, and when you want to go into higher education, and when you want to get higher education, you have to go deeply into debt. I was talking to a young lady the, the other day, Mara, who wanted to be um, in media. She went to college, went $30,000 into debt. Now she just wants to pay off her debt. She's, I paid $15,000 in interest, but her debt had barely gone down. So she went to graduate school so she could get a better job. Now she's $130,000 in debt. Uh -huh. And she's still having a hard time finding a job that, that, that pays well. That's insane. And, that, and it's that type of equation that keeps us from being as prosperous as we could be. It's really interesting that your perspective as an, an activist um, shows in what you just said, and I'll tell you why. Um, yesterday I had on a, a young woman, Bianca Cunningham, uh, who is one of the first people to organize Verizon Wireless. Um, and she is uh, in her early 20s, um, worked a minimum wage job. And I asked her what are the things that she would choose as the number one things um, to promote economic justice in this country. Uh, and she didn't say anything that are, is the, in the normal prescriptive um, uh, progressive playbook. She said nothing about minimum wage. She said nothing about free college. She said nothing about the full suite of things you normally hear about. She said we need to strengthen public institutions. Yeah hospitals and education, just like you said. She said we need to um, end payday loans through postal banking. Yeah. And we need to um, uh, end broken windows so that millions of people don't have their economic yes. futures destroyed. Yeah. And, that's, and that's the activist's answer, right? And that's the grassroots answer for economic justice. And it's funny, you just touched on all of those things in your life, and so you actually show um, what you could bring as an activist to the political sphere that someone who hadn't been wouldn't. No. I mean, that just occurred to me. Yeah, well, look, you know, at the same time, we can't be afraid of progressives of actually talking about the fact that we have strategies that will make our society more prosperous. That's but, right. You know, That's right. What's real is that when you, when, when you make it easier for young people, and frankly, even folks who are m middle aged to switch careers, to build their career through additional education, mm. and you don't burden them with debt, they take risks that lead to big advances for our economy, for yeah. you know, and, and, and that's what makes our country great. Like historically, is that we've been a country where you could come and frankly, if we're honest, get the support you need from society to go take that big risk. Mm -hmm. we're, we're one of the most creative, innovative societies on the planet. Mm -hmm. But when you talk to young people who are settled in debt, they're afraid of taking a risk. And then that's a threat to, to the future of our economy. Right. All right, so we, they're uh, giving me the, the land the plane signal. I wanted to touch on right before we leave. We've got to do like the two-hour version yeah, of this. We should do like drunken. Happy to do it. Uh, drinking with Ben Jealous. <laughs> That's right. Drunk um, politics with Amar Jones. Drunk politics, yeah. <laughs> Driving drunk in a car. No, that's not going um, to uh, Activist. So yeah. you are an activist activist. You've always been. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> this is a fusion conference between the activism and politics. Yeah. What would you counsel? Like if you could go back in time and tell young Ben Jealous, who's 19, um, helping to organize Harlem, helping to organize Columbia to fight for, for, for financial aid. What would you tell that Ben about um, the life of an activist and the things that are important? You know, I, um, I really have no regrets. Like, in some ways I wish I did. I feel like it'd be a more interesting book when I write it one day. I've been blessed, Mara. I, um, what I tell young people is when you're young, take all the risk you can because soon, the car note comes and then the house note and the kid and things, you know, get a little bit harder to take risks. Your parents get sick. Yes, yeah. but you know, you and I throughout our careers taking risks, our personal lives have taken risks mm. and we're blessed for it, mm -hmm. right? And, and uh, yeah, and so I think that's what, I, you know, I would just go back and say like, don't worry so much and know that your father's really proud even if he only talks to you about how you're going to pay back your college debt. Got it. <laughs> Well, and on the debt note, um, we're happy to have you. Thank you so much. You've got a busy schedule. You're talking to other people. Uh, ben Jealous is a progressive running for the governor of um, 
of Maryland and my future roaster. So thank you for joining <laughs> us. <laughs>